Oh, hey, Dave Hunt here, owner of Game Masters Guild. Caught me at a good time. It's after hours, and I'm all locked up. There's nobody else here, just me and you. And you know, this is a good time for us to sit down and talk about the mystic arts. And, well, just exactly what is the mystic arts, you say? Well, quite frankly, the mystic arts is where I take you on a journey to show you how I paint miniatures. And speaking of miniatures, let's start right from the top. Let's take a look at what kind of miniatures there are out there for you to get. Now, you're probably going to ask, well, Dave, I don't care about painting miniatures. I don't want to do that. Well, not a problem because I'm going to solve it. Come right this way. Now, I try to think about everybody here at Game Masters Guild, and I have a selection of pre-painted miniatures. I've got a pretty large selection of guys to choose from. I've got loose miniatures that I get from collections, as well as some random ones, such as in these four-pack boxes. The only downside with these four-pack boxes are you don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get a couple monsters. You might get a player character. But these are definitely cool. But if you're looking for something to represent your character, let's see, what do I have? Well, I got some of these really sweet Icon of the Realms painted D&D miniatures. These guys are about eight bucks, but they're really sharp looking. And it's worth the extra couple dollars to get them, especially if you're not big on painting. But let's see what else I got. I got a pretty big selection down here of these Wardlane miniatures. And what's really cool about these guys, these are also $7.99. But what's really neat about them is not only do you get a figure, but you also get an extra figure with them, like a familiar or an animal companion. And I got to tell you, this line is really great and the detail is really awesome. And for pre-painted miniatures, man, you can't beat these Wardlings. Now, after the painted miniatures, after that, it's unpainted. And I have a slew of unpainted miniatures. As you can see right here behind me, I have the largest amount of in-stock Nolzers and Pathfinder Deep Cuts miniatures on the Gulf Coast. And what's really great about these miniatures is most of these miniatures, they come in two packs, two different sweet poses. And on the back, it shows you exactly how they can look like when they're painted. And what's nice is you can use this as a quick reference guide. That way you don't have to spend time looking stuff up on YouTube. But then again, I love YouTube. All right, now, so we got these two figures for five bucks, for $4.99. But now, what if you don't need player characters or standard villains like a maybe an evil female dwarf summoner? Maybe you don't need that. Maybe you need a really honest to goodness monster. Well, let's take a look, see what we got here. Troll, one big large creature for five bucks. Man, you cannot beat that. That's great. If you looking for something smaller, let's see if I can find him here. Let's see, oh look, a Lich Mummy Lord. Not smaller, but still pretty cool. You got a Lich, you got a Mummy, and a cool magic effect that you can paint up too. And what I really like about these kind of figures is this extra magic effect. Sometimes I might just base it all on its own and use it for something else entirely different. I mean, you can't tell me that this magic effect right here, that you couldn't paint it up as a slime. You're really getting three miniatures out of this. That is if you want to do it like that. I like to think outside the box. All right, let's see. Now, sometimes you can get like these little imps in quasits. You get two imps and two quasits for the same price for five bucks. And what's really nice about this whole line of Nolzers and Pathfinder Deep Cuts miniatures is they're already pre-primed out of the package, ready to go, which means you don't have to get a spray can and spray them down. All you gotta do is pop them out and start painting with whatever paint you got. Now, if these aren't the right speed for you, I got some larger miniatures for you. Let's take a look over here. What do I got up here? I got a T-Rex, and he's 16 bucks. I mean, that thing is impressive. I got giants. Look at this. I got a stone giant here. What else do I got? I got a Triceratops. And, of course, no game of Dungeons & Dragons could possibly be complete without a dragon. Oh, yeah. 
I got dragons. And it's 16 bucks. Look at how big that miniature is. I mean, it fills the whole camera. I can't even get this in the shot, it's so big. Okay, so I'm just putting it real close. But you get the picture, this thing is great. And the poses and the details on these things, really, really good, especially for the money you're spending. All right, so we've seen all these different miniatures to choose from, but you're like, Dave, man, I don't even have five bucks to throw down on two miniatures, much less eight bucks for a painted one. What am I going to do? All right, man, I tell you, you uh, you certainly know what you want, but also, too, man, when you're on a budget, I know how that is. I've been on a budget before, and I got to tell you, I'm going to help you out. I do have, and even if you're not, if I'm not your local store, you're going to, your local FLGS is probably going to have a bunch of random hero clicks figures, either some ma old Mage Knight Hero Clicks or some actual, honest to goodness, Hero Clicks miniatures. And if you just ask around in your community, odds are good that some of the other guys up there at your local FLGS, no matter where you are, that they're going to have some of these. And Hero Clicks is basically a collectible miniatures game. And just like collectible card games, there's going to be figures that are so common that they'll literally just give them away. Here at the store, what do I do with them? right now i'm selling them 10 for 15 bucks or two dollars each your choice now i gotta tell you you're like dave hero clicks i'm playing a fantasy game you have lost your mind well i gotta tell you i have it and i'm gonna show you now let me make some room i'm trying to do this all in real time here so i'm gonna set this camera right down here and bear with me i'm gonna make some few adjustments there we go. All right. Now, this is my Hero Clicks box, right? Well, this is the Fantasy Mage Knight box. Let, let's look at this box first. So, as you can see, as you look in here and see what kind of miniatures we got. We got a lady on a unicorn. We got, what do we got? We got a cool hellhound looking thing. This lady's really awesome. Look at this. She looks like she could be some kind of warlock or warrior cleric or paladin or necromancer or wizard. Who knows? It's only limited to your imagination. What else do I got? Man, I got all sorts of stuff. I got a guy with a couple of swords. I mean, this guy right here, he could easily be some kind of rogue. And I know that... Let me see if I can zoom this in real quick. Let's see here. All right, see, he's got a couple swords. He looks pretty good. He's pretty awesome looking. Look, I got this giant crypt worm thing. I mean, that's pretty cool. You see that in a dungeon. And that's going to stir up your players. And that's something else I'm going to talk about later is miniature substitution to keep your players on their toes. But we'll get to that probably in an episode of Art of the Master. What do I got here? I got some weird freaky creature, some kind of bizarre zombie thing. What else do I got? Look at this guy, man. This guy right here, he's a cool looking knight guy. Or a ranger, you could even make him as a ranger. I got a dwarf right here with a, with a big old honking battle axe. I mean, these things are just great. There are so many different miniatures in here, it's ridiculous. Look at this, I got a centaur. I mean, that's cool, a centaur. Do you know how hard it is to find a centaur as a player character on the Nolzer's rack? It's tough, or in any line. It's tough, much less one that's gonna fit as a medium creature in a one inch base. Now, I haven't checked the, the handbook to see if it's a, actually a large creature, a medium creature, but still, a centaur, and it's got a bow. You can't beat that. What else do I got in here? Man, I got a dude with a crossbow. He's certainly very roguish looking. I mean, these guys are awesome. Now, this guy is supposed to be some kind of spectral death knight, but with a little imagination, Ah, he's just a cool rogue. All right, so we're done looking at these. Now, the Mage Knight miniatures, I'm going to tell you, the detail on some of them isn't that good. But some of the poses are really amazing. And I got to tell you, if you can find a really sweet looking one, I mean, man, it's going to be worth it. 
Now, I mean, it, I could dig through this thing all night, but honestly, you dig through it for about five or 10 minutes tops, and you're gonna come out, I swear, with like half a dozen sweet looking mansions for your game. Now, you're gonna ask me, what about these big bases? This is not a one inch base. If you're playing on a grid map, these things are annoying. That's true, that's true. Now, if you're playing, let's say, with a monster, let's see if I can pull a monster up, like this Crypt Worm right here. What's cool about this bigger base is I can put it pretty much covering, or in the center of four squares, so I take up the same amount of room as a large creature, and this monster, let's face it, this big old ugly worm, he should be a large creature, no problem. Now, you're gonna look at this thing and wonder, but Dave, what about all those vital statistics on it? It's got all those that writing and junk on there. I don't want that on there, it's too distracting. Well, you know what I do? First of all, if you got paints, I just paint over it with black. And if you don't have paints and you don't like the paint, go get yourself a Sharpie, and I'm sure you got one laying around, and scribble it all out with black. It's like painting. And if you buy this from me and you're like, Dave, can you scribble this out in Sharpie? Man, I'd be happy to scribble all that stuff out in Sharpie. And once that Sharpie dries, it's black. And ain't nobody gonna care when they're fighting this thing in the middle of a dungeon anyways. So, now let's go back to, to this dude. Actually, can we find that really cool warlock lady? Man, this lady is so cool. Now, her base is pretty big. Now, I gotta tell you though, it's not too hard to pop these things off their bases. Now, if you are not 18, I recommend highly that you talk to an adult before you pull out a knife and start trying to pop these things off their bases. Sometimes you can gently pull and they'll come off, but a lot of times it takes a little more work. Now remember, this can be, and is probably one of the most dangerous things you'll actually do as a nerd, and that's popping these things off these bases. I have almost cut myself and I've cut myself a few times. Now, I use a knife. And what I do is there's a spot where they glue it onto the base. And what I do is I get my knife on one side and I gently work it, prying it up. And I'm real close. I go real slow and careful. Now, I've been doing this for a lot, so this is pretty easy for me. And then I keep going, slowly work it. And if I'm having a tough time, I turn it. And I'm just trying to get right under that miniature there. That, there it goes. Pops right off. That was easy. Now, some of them I've tried way too hard and have almost seriously cut myself. So you want to be very careful. And again, you definitely want to get the assistance of an adult. Now, what do we have after that? Well, we got this really cool looking warlock lady. And you know what we're going to do? All we're going to do is we're going to glue her on a one inch base and call it good. Well, what if you don't have any one inch bases? You're probably going to tell me, Dave, I don't own any bases. How much are bases? Ah, oh, well, I can get about 100 of them for like $25. Dave, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to buy 100 bases for one figure. You're right. So if you buy one of these guys and you need a base, man, I'll give it to you. And if I got glue handy, which I'm in a game store, I usually do, I'll glue it right on there while you wait. And if you don't think about it while you're here or you get a bunch of them, I mean, onesie, twosies, no problem. But if you get like 20 of these guys, I'm not going to be able to pop them all off bases and glue them for free. I mean, let's just face it. That's not practical. But you know what? You could go get yourself a nickel, glue this lady to a nickel, color it in with Sharpie. Man, and you're in business. And what's nice about that is nickel's a little heavier, and it'll keep that miniature from tipping over while it's on your mat. Plus, what's really cool about using a nickel as a base, you think, well, that's money, Dave. Well, yeah, but you know what? If you were to get, let's say, this many miniatures, I'm gonna charge you 50 cents for a base. And that's with me gluing it, or not, depending on, you know, if you got time. Because if you're getting this many figures, I'm gonna charge you for it. I just have to, you know, it's, it's how I work. It's a business. And that's gonna cost you 50 cents a base. So you get this lady for two bucks, I'll pop her off the base for free or show you how to do it. And then you go home, you get a nickel, you glue her to it. Like I said, you cut it in with Sharpie and you got a one inch base that's weighted for five cents. And you know what I just did? I talked you out of buying my one inch bases. What kind of business guy does that? This kind of business guy. All right, so 
we got her popped off the base and we know what we're going to do with her not a problem so i'm going to i'm going to stop talking about mage knight for a second because these are specifically fantasy figures but now let's talk about this box right here what is this box got the fancy ones over here but sometimes the fancy ones aren't available i got lucky and found a big collection and threw a bunch of my own in there that way they're here for everybody to get but if you can't find those mage knight fancy figures well then let's take a look at hero clicks and again there's a bunch of these guys let's get a little support here so you can kind of see in my box of wonders all right so now i won't lie to you i did go through and spend about 10 minutes pulling out miniatures and i threw some conveniently right on the top so i had them at the ready so you didn't have to watch me pick through this for 10 minutes and go hmm 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 so just want you to be aware now first of all let's take a look at monsters look at this cool bat guy he's got a staff and everything this guy is called the indigo tribe recruit i have no idea what that is but you can dang sure bet he's pretty awesome looking i'm gonna take a sharpie i'm gonna black out all that white print on him and He's a large creature, and he casts spells, and he's a giant bat? This just gets better. My imagination is exploding right now with the kind of things I could do with this guy. This is nuts. You know what I would probably do? I would probably make him like a master vampire and just give him the master vampire stats, but use this figure. And why not? Why not? How cool is this? You take this miniature and bam, you set it out in the middle of a field. The player's going to go, what's that? And you're going to say, you don't know. Roll for it. They don't know they're fighting just a master vampire. But you're going to use those exact same stats and you're going to use this figure instead. But when I lay a figure down in front of my players, that's for me especially nowadays because I got so many. But if I lay down a figure, I like to say that's exactly what you see. Now, of course, if you don't have a whole lot of stuff, sometimes you have to use other figures as substitutes, and I understand that. But it sure is fun. We can put something like this down in front of your players for $2 that you bought at this local FLGS for $2 and freak them out and have them going, what is that? I don't know what that is. Somebody might decide well he's just probably gonna use the vampire stats but they don't really know they don't really know and then he's got this cool magic staff well man give him a magic staff the only thing worse than a master vampire is a master vampire with a magic staff it's gonna be some cool loot if they survive okay let's take a look at some other cool hero clicks we can use uh pretty much unmodified hawkeye he's all in black they probably didn't have a whole lot of black leather back then. But you know what? This looks pretty good. You know, I would pop him off that base and use him as is. Oh, look, he's got sunglasses. Mm, okay, so that kind of takes you out of the element a little bit. But you know what? A little flesh-colored paint, and you could paint off those sunglasses real easy. Just a quick swipe. One, two, glasses gone. And then if you didn't like the fact that he's all in black, well, then what you can do is you could take some brown and just color his bow. Maybe I'd do his bow in a, uh, you know, some kind of lighter brown and do his, his pants and his general suit in kind of like a leather and, you know, give some little quick other details like uh, maybe, I don't know, like put his belt a different color or if you can find a little bauble or something on him that you could paint up like a little piece of metal or something like his belt buckle or puts a little... You paint little things on the side of his boots just to give him some contrast or something. Or make his top half kind of like a green shirt or something like that. Just anything. Anything other than this black. Or you could just stick with it because it looks pretty cool. He's got a quiver and everything. Let's see what else we can find. We got a big monster there. Um, let's see. I had something kind of cool. All right. Poison Ivy. Check that out. She should pop off the base pretty easy. And uh, But I don't know about you, but... She'd make an excellent druid, unmodified. Now look at this lady. This is this is Jinx. Man, you can't tell me that she does not look like a fantasy sorceress. And she's got cool magic stuff going on with her hands. Dude, this lady is pure sword and sorcery. She'd be good as a warlock, a sorcerer, wizard in a pinch. I mean, or maybe even a druid. 
I mean, this is great. This is good stuff. And I mean, and you can't see the detail on my camera because it won't focus in and I don't want to spend, you know, extra few minutes messing around with it. But I'll save it for the end of the video and I'll zoom in on some of these other miniatures so you can really see the detail later. But she is, her detail's actually pretty good. And I'd be happy to get this kind of detail and have it as clean as it is. Now, if you're a professional painter, if you're watching this and you paint, and you paint your entire Warhammer army, you're going to look at me and shake my head that I'm complimenting a Heroclix miniature that's just out of the package. But I got to tell you, for what you really need it for, I mean, seriously, for playing Dungeons and Dragons or any kind of fantasy game, for that matter, just to have a painted figure on the table, people can go, oh, that's cool looking, yeah. I mean, you're not, you're not entering a painting contest. You're looking to play. And unpainted miniatures, there's nothing wrong with that. But after a while, they just kind of blend together. It's nice to have something with a little bit of paint on it. And she's awesome. All right, let's take a look. Look, this dude, uh, Secret Empire number nine. He's some kind of secret agent or something like that. But check him out. He looks like a cultist. Done. No, no, no alterations required. Uh, swordsman. He's got a sword. He's got a scabbard. He's got a helmet. Looks like he's ready for battle. All I would probably do is I'd go back, touch up the helmet with a little bit of silver, and it looks like he's got some hair coming out the on the back side and maybe on the top, almost like a little man of hair up there. I don't know if that's his or part of the helmet. I'd just paint it all silver and be done with it. Um, let's see. You could probably... I'd Because he's all kind of a purple and kind of red... I would sit there and I'd leave the, I might leave the gold belt on him. It just looks kind of cool, kind of standout-ish. I don't know how you'd explain it. Maybe it's like a, I don't know, copper or something. It doesn't really matter. But you could sit there and you could, you could paint, you could paint him like a leather color or something, anything. But he's pretty cool. He's pretty much ready to go outside the box. But I would definitely, you know, hit him up with some different colors, kind of tone him down a little bit, make it more fantasy looking unless your character just likes purple but i don't i just don't think that works too well but you know i mean literally five minutes throw some quick paint on him he's ready to go oh uh, let's see this lady right here this is superior and she's okay she's got a big old cloak uh she's got yellow and black and orange and she looks kind of out there but you know she would probably do for a cool wizard or a cool sorceress. Um, what I would probably do is I'd definitely tone down that cloak from that yellow. I'd get some other darker color and kind of darken it up maybe a little bit. And I'd take care of the suit a little bit. Maybe give her, you know, maybe I'd probably, who knows, maybe I'd leave her boots black or brown. And, uh, you know, just give her a different overall paint scheme. Um, that takes a little bit more work, but even as is, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It works. Uh, some of these guys, like this guy is, is Aztec. Now he's on a flying base. But uh, he already looks kind of cool. You know? Looks like he's got some light armor on him of some kind. So he's just kind of neat. What else we got? We've got a big old brute guy. He's like a big old barbarian right there. But you know, he's got looks like he's got a jumpsuit. Uh, you could easily paint away most of that jumpsuit if you wanted to. Oh, we got Moon Dragon right here. And uh, look at her, man. She is a monk ready to go. And I would repaint her, what is that, purple shoes? I'd repaint those for sure. Uh, and maybe this back half of her outfit, or at least her leggings, I'd paint something different. Just so that we got some contrast. That's just so she's not all green. You know, I'd paint a belt on her. Maybe this thing would just a different color, like a white or something. I don't know. Just something other than that. But in that, she's pretty cool. I kind of like her. Uh, this guy, he's all in red. What is this guy? This is the Advocate. He's got a sweet sword, a throwing star, a helmet with horns on it. I mean, that's totally epic fantasy. I'd repaint his helmet some kind of different metallic color. I'd, uh, right here on the sword, I'd probably repaint this grip, get, kind of get it some kind of leather wrap on it, something real quick. Um, instead of having the blade silver and the guard silver, maybe I'd paint that like a brass or a gold. Um, get some other color contrast in there maybe paint the center area kind of like with his with his belt and his sash maybe like a white or something like that just something to kind of uh so he's not a big red blob on the table all right let's see now and i tell you you get lucky with some of them 
like the Black Knight, man, he looks like a dude. He's already looks like a, a fancy dude ready to go. I mean, yeah, you can't beat that. Oh, look, here's a, look, your work's already been done for you here. This is Electra. She doesn't even have a base, so she's ready to be glued, and she's a perfect kind of monk. Look at that. That's awesome. She's ready to go. All right. What else? Is there anything else in here? Man, there's so much stuff we can use. Uh, here's here, Okay, here's an example. This is something interesting. So this guy, this is like a dwarf, right? Well, he looks like a dwarf to me, but he's got a sledgehammer and he's got a Superman cloak on. Well, well, first of all, we'd have to pop him off this clear base. And this cloak, what do we do? Well, let's see here. Oh, look at that. It pops right off. Now he looks like he's just in armor. Okay, now in the back, he's got a couple holes. But you know what? You could fill that up if you had a little bit of putty. Um, he's got kind of, he's got the big Superman S on him, but you know what? You could sit there and kind of roughen that up and kind of make that not so obvious. But even still, even if he didn't, um, he's a dwarf in plate mail. I mean, easy, easy peasy. This is easy stuff. Sometimes you get super lucky and you get literally a vampire. I mean, this is literally a vampire. Classic Bela Lugosi style vampire. It's great. Uh, what else we got here? Man, I have gone on and on and on about these things. But these things are great. You can really, you can really use these for whatever. And look at this. I got Yellow Jacket, and you could use her as a sprite or something like that. Got a lot of repainting to do on her, but no problem. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at for miniatures right here. Um, there's a bunch of stuff you can do on the cheap to increase your miniatures collection. Are they the best in the world? Nah, is their detail real great? Mm, not usually, but I gotta tell you, in order to increase your miniatures collection, these things are great. And on top of that, if you're looking to run not just a fantasy game, but let's say a horror game, or perhaps a science fiction game, these hero clicks are a great resource. I can't ha tell you how many zombies I've got that are dressed in modern clothes or guys wielding guns, SWAT team members, medics, uh, scientists, people in normal clothes. I mean, there are a ton of different stuff in here. I mean, even like this Iron Man guy. Uh, first of all, if you run a heroes game, perfect. You got a guy. Who looks like Iron Man and you could repaint him with your own color scheme and now you're your own Iron Man or this guy's in an armored spacesuit or maybe he's a cyborg or a full conversion Borg if you're playing riffs just paint them all red it's only limited to your imagination I mean what what a great idea so no matter where you are these miniatures right here are a great resource and Right now, I'm going to take some time to zoom in on some of these miniatures that I pulled out just so you can see the detail and the quality. And remember, if you're going to pop them off the base, be very, very careful. Uh, if, you're, if you're not 18, you should definitely get an adult or other responsible family member to pop them off the bases because you can hurt yourself and cut yourself very, very badly. I've come very close to cutting myself very badly before, so you've got to be really careful. And if you're in the local area, come by and I'll show you how to do it or... If I got time, I'll do it for you. Um, and remember, you don't have to spend money on bases. You just use a nickel. And I got to tell you, when you're playing on a table, it's nice to have a weighted base so your miniature doesn't move around so much if someone jars the table. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed this segment of the Mystic Arts and uh, on the selection of miniatures. And I'm going to go ahead and let you go with that. And... I'm Dave Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild. Stay safe, play great games, and I'll see you real soon. Ninja! Ninja.